Good. Honestly, there's 62 tabs. This is probably, yesterday was a long show, so sorry about that. Today, it might be longer because there's 50, there's 62 tabs. Um, so there's lots to get to. Don't forget to get your ticket. It's this Saturday. Uh, it'll be lots of fun. Link is in the description for Speaking Moistly Live. Uh, it's me and Greg and um, Dr. Patrick Phillips, Sarah C. And I'm going to get her last name and be able to say it and everything on Saturday, I'm sure. And Scarlett Martin. And uh, it'll be lots and lots of fun. It's in Mississauga and uh, not too long a drive down the 401. When you buy your ticket, I send you an email with the location. So um, we'll see you on Saturday. It's going to be great. Okay, let's get to it. Sam Cooper. Sam Cooper says, this is China. We got to talk about China. Holy smokeronis, China, China, China. More emerging, says Sam Cooper, on the upheaval at Trudeau at the Trudeau Foundation. La Presse, citing sources alle alleging conflict of interest and lack of transparency from foundation members that accepted massive PRC-linked check. Now, turns out, name on on the check doesn't look legitimate. So they took, they took a check from somebody and they can't return. The problem is they can't return the donation. So it's so funny because it should have been, well, the donation was returned and everything was fine, but they can't return the donation because it looks like they can't find the, the donor because he didn't use his real name. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, okay, so the gift is a stink bomb, right? La Press was able to interview five people who resigned from the Trudeau Foundation because of ethical questions raised by a donation from China. Eight members of the board of directors, four members of senior management, and six people acting as mentors resigned on block from the foundation, Trudeau Foundation on Tuesday over major ethical questions raised by the Chinese donation made to the foundation in 2016 and 2017. They, they weren't actually made in 2016 and 2017. I think it was made in 2014 before Trudeau was actually um, disengaged from the foundation. Andy Lee makes her case. You get to make up your mind. I don't know what's true and what's not. These guys say 2016, 2017. Andy Lee says, check that. It was actually 2014. So who knows? I think I lean on the side of believing Andy Lee. You make up your mind. Back to this. The reason given by the foundation in the official press release released on Tuesday that the politicization of this donation from China is a bunch of lies, one of the resigning board member told the press. Administration, um, uh, they'll call him AB, okay, through the story. In total, the press was able to interview five people who left their positions at the Trudeau Foundation, all requested anonymity because of the difficult climate that reigned in recent weeks with the organization. I've seen intimidating, I've seen intimidating and even threatening behavior at the foundation. It's not an easy climate. I don't remember seeing that in my career, says another board member who resigned on Tuesday, who will call CD. The, Trudeau, uh, the Chinese donation never reimbursed. The Trudeau Foundation presents itself as a nonpartisan organization, and it offers scholarships, mentorships, and fellowship programs. It was founded in 2022, or 2002, excuse me, after the death of Pierre Elliott Trudeau. At the center of the conflict, which tore, uh, tore the board of directors, the famous donation, which emanated in theory from a wealthy, well-known Chinese businessman, Zhang Bin, close to the Chinese Communist Party. It was Chinese authorities who allegedly ordered the contractor to donate $200,000 to the Trudeau Foundation, the Globe and Mail revealed in February, based on a national security source who, support, who reported information intercepted by the Canadian Security Intelligence Surface, Services, CSIS. The foundation then undertook to repay his donation. In light of the recent allegations, the foundation has refunded the full amount of the donation received directly to the donor, said the organization's executive director, Pascal Fournier, on March first, except that reimbursement could never materialize. Quote, until recently, my understanding was that the donation had been refunded, but last I heard he wasn't, said another resigning board member who we'll call EF. An internal foundation document obtained by La Press shows that the crisis erupted at the end of March. The board of directors was then alerted to the fact that the name on the check from the famous Chinese donation was not the name of the real donor. The foundation could therefore not reimburse the sum to this true donor since his name did not appear anywhere in the foundation's books. Such reimbursement would therefore have, have been unlawful, states the document. Eight members of the board of directors who were not on it at the time the donation was made to the foundation then called for an independent investigation to be carried out. Where have we heard this before, right? They also asked the members of the board of directors who sat on the foundation at the time to recuse themselves from any discussion on the subject since they were, quote, in obvious conflict of interest, underlines AB. Quote, the management really wanted to let all the light be shed on this. Confirms a fourth resigner from the foundation, whom we'll call GH. Quote, anyone who was on the finance committee or the audit committee at the time of the donation has a conflict of interest because they accepted these checks. AB continues, they should not therefore be part of, invest of an investigation on this subject. They should have recused themselves and they refused. 
There, there are people at the foundation who have been around too long and have become way too involved. An independent investigation would have determined who the donor was, if there was any conditions attached to, the, to these sums and the relationships behind it all. Just a quick aside, very quick. If you were on the board of directors at the time of the donation and the true donator, the true name of the person making the donation was not on the check, but it was accepted, wouldn't you have questions? Wouldn't you want an independent inquiry and maybe have yourself recused so uh, it could be fully investigated and you could find out what was happening? And the people who didn't want that, wouldn't that be then suspicious? I don't want to draw any suspicion to myself, but we shouldn't investigate this at all. Oh, really? Why do you think not? Um, so it's very interesting to me. It's, it'd be a very tricky game to um, call for no investigation. But I mean, they, people have full-throated, we had a vaccine rolled out and everybody said it was safe and effective. Uh, safe and effective. And if you said anything different, you were removed from society. So I don't know, tricky. And all they had to do was repeat things over and over, right? So all they have to do is, is say something over and over and people will with it. That's, that's something that I definitely learned through the pandemic. I don't think I would have believed it had I not seen it with my own eyes. Um, this gift is a stink bomb. Back to the article. Summarizes GH. What we experienced was an internal crisis of govern, governance in relation to the management of this file, Add CD. We've lost confidence in the capacity of the organization to handle the file with transparency, integrity, and accountability. The rebellious board members even thought of asking the office at the Auditor General to look into this whole issue. At the office of the VG, spokesperson Vincent Fregan said that he had not received an audit request from the foundation. We contacted the three members of the foundation who are still in office in order to get their comments. One of them declined our interview offer. The other two did not respond to our request. The foundation's executive director, Pascal Fournier, who also resigned on Tuesday, also declined our interview request. Morris Rosenberg, who served as the foundation's president at the time of the donations, told us he had no information about the, uh, the resignations. The foundation would never have received the full sum of $200,000, says Mr. Rosenberg. The donations were to be made in two installments. But the whole thing is very, very, very suspect, very suspect. And it casts a very concerning light on our government. And will anything happen? I hope so. Fingers crossed, but I don't know. Uh, Real Andy Lee says, there's just one small problem here. Um, so she's responding to this statement from the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation. And she says, there's one problem. The donation wasn't made in 2016. It was made in 2014, while Justin Trudeau was still very much active in the foundation, according to the donor's own website. The contracts, that contradicts your statement and our prime minister's. So here's her proof of this. Selling or setting, it says, setting University of Montreal Law School, Zhang Bin Nu Yensha Scholarship. Um, in 2014, our foundation donated 1 million SGD to set up a scholarship fund in the University of Montreal Law School, the alma mater of the former Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau, with the purpose of promoting Sino-Canadian exchanges in culture, education, and law, as well as creating a bronze statue of Pierre Elliott Trudeau. And this is the one where they wanted to also have one of Chairman Mao, right? Trudeau and Mao, Mao and Trudeau. Yay! What, what do you mean Chinese influence? I don't know what you're talking about. Ni hao. Um, okay, Real Andy Lee says again, information indicates the donations to the Trudeau Foundation was negotiation, negotiated between September 2014 and 2016 after Mr. Trudeau's involvement with the foundation had ended. I will therefore not be looking further into the matter. No, it wasn't. It was made in the summer of 2014. And here's a thread to prove that, says Andy Lee. Um, and so... We, we will look through this thread in just a minute, right now, actually. Um, why should the board and CEO resign and not Justin Trudeau? He was still involved in the Trudeau Foundation when this bribe from the Chinese government was accepted. And this article proves it. It was made, it was made in June of 2014 before Justin recused himself. Okay, so this is the Zhengbin Genshou Trudeau Education Fund. Um, and the article is uh, June 14, 2014. Hold on, let me see. Andy Lee may have got it wrong. This is actually September. It says, the date on the um, article says 2014-1209. That's September 12th. So if it is September 2014, then possibly Trudeau did recuse himself from that position. Um, but there's a lot of other concerning things that are happening with this foundation with Trudeau's involvement anyway, regardless of the exact date of these, um, these donations. Here's Pierre 
um, Polyev, and he says, Dear Rapporteur, so he's, he's addressed this to David Johnson, Special Rapporteur, Ottawa, Ontario. Dear Rapporteur, explain this. How will you investigate Beijing's donation to the Trudeau Foundation when you were part of the Trudeau Foundation? Awaiting your answer, Pierre Polyev, leader of the opposition. So that's um, very, very Pierre Polyev. That's a, a very Polyev thing to do. It's interesting. I wonder how that will play out. I wonder how long it will take for David Johnson to recuse himself or to step out or down from this position. He was the governor general while that was happening. He was the governor general while um, the Chinese were influencing the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation, while the Chinese were um, attempting to buy influence, right? Uh, so very interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, Reginald says, if the Trudeau Foundation was above board and David Johnson has impeccable te integrity, why did they feel it necessary to scrub his name from the Trudeau Foundation website? Wah, wah. Very interesting, right? And you can look in the Wayback Machine. There are lots and lots of hits for David Johnson. Very interesting. Very interesting. Why would they do that? Here's real Andy Lee again. She says, is it, a, is it a good time to point out that the now resigned president of the disgraced Trudeau Foundation, Pascal Fournier, was part of the 2015 conference given out by the special rapporteur, David Johnson, who is also conveniently investigating foreign interference for Trudeau? Huh. Weird, right? Oddly enough, that direct link seems to be broken. You can try it here for yourself. That's all right, though. I found it under the alum, alumni activities or archives. Um, another broken link about the event. Curious, why is the 2015 Governor General's David Johnson's leadership conference page, which the CEO of the Trudeau, Trudeau Foundation attended and participated in, scrubbed from the internet? Very interesting, right? Former Trudeau Foundation President Pascal Fournier information page on special rapporteur David Johnson leadership conference has been scrubbed. Why? You've got to wonder. And uh, here's the web archive, right? And you can find it there if you're interested. Link is in the description. But it's very, very interesting how closely tied all of these people are to all of these very, uh, well, they don't seem innocent, do they? I don't think they seem innocent. You could say they look innocent on their surface, but it doesn't seem like they are if you peel back any onion, any layers at all, right? Ezra Levent says Chuck Strahl resigned from the Trudeau Foundation in 2016 over the money laundering scandal. Everyone knew how dirty they were. Today's mass resignation is a, pain, a pitiful attempt to avoid liability for being a CCP slush fund to the Trudeau family. So whether or not the, the influence was purchased before Trudeau was, was connected or not is one thing. But there is purchase of influence through donations to the Trudeau Foundation and the behavior of the Trudeau liberals in appointing people to plumb positions and giving people sole source contracts. It's, there's questions abound at how this charity was being used. In 2017, Justin, I think it was 2017, Justin Trudeau repealed the Harper era law of auditing charities saying, no, charities do net good. Harper was auditing NGOs and other charities to make sure they were actually doing charitable work and not just funding extremists and zealots, you know, like Trudeau does. Um, and it turns out Trudeau really wanted to use the government to fund extremists and, and zealots. And so he repealed that law. And so now no, no charities are audited in Canada. Thanks, Justin. Real Andy Lee says donations, this is what I'm talking about, donations to the Trudeau Foundation to purchase influence increased, right? Increased lots. Um, donations made to the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation increased by over 500% during the pandemic and its revenue has more than doubled, but hey, get those uh, trucker donors. So during the trucker convoy, there was a hacked database of people who donated to the convoy and because that was leaked the government went after those people and froze their bank accounts um i personally if you would ask me um i think i i don't think the government is above paying a hacker to do that for them not to say that i think the government was directly involved in that or anything like that but i don't think they're above that i think that if they've magically found a database of all the people who donated to the trucker convoy and they don't know how they got it and, and they don't know who did it but somebody maybe got a sole source contract for it or whatever who knows don't ask don't tell right um they wouldn't be above that they wouldn't be above that at all i, I don't think 
Anyway, back to Annie Lee. She says, understand why this is concerning. The Trudeau Foundation has its own COVID-19 committee. Members acted as experts for CBC on Canada's response. They advocated for only allowing unvaccinated citizens to access food and medicine, saying they shouldn't be circulating freely. This dramatic increase in donations to the Trudeau Foundation during the pandemic begs the question, do we have entities debate donating and is the foundation COVID committee then reinforcing public policy in their favor? Is this a sort of pay to play donations for influence? Thank you, uh, Martin, for the beautiful graph. I have all the financials, but the visual is more powerful than the words. So there you go. There's the visual. I don't know. I, th I think the visual is kind of understating it. But anyway, um, because there's a lot more. I think there's a lot more money that's going through it than what's on that graph. Here's Kevin Vong. He's talking about timelines and money pay for influence. And he says, if I understand the timeline, 2013, Justin becomes the leader. 2014, Globe reports CSIS captured CCP plan for billionaire to donate a million dollars to the to Trudeau Foundation. 2015, Justin Trudeau wins a majority. 2016, another wealthy Chinese businessman donates a million dollars. We need an independent inquiry now. So millions of dollars. I think that's small potatoes. Ah, small potato because Justin's small potato. Um, I, I think that that's probably a drop in the bucket proverbially of the number of donations received for the Trudeau Foundation and for Trudeau on, on the whole. I think that there's a lot of money going around. Lots and lots of money. Changing hands, exchanging, circulating. Um, Andrew says, Prime Minister Trudeau's brother, Alexander Trudeau, and sister Sarah Coyne have been directors of the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation. I wonder if there's any relation to a reporter guy. I honestly don't know. Um, Senator Batters, I mean, all these people are starting to do Andy Lee's job. Holy smoke. Senator Batters says key Trudeau Foundation facts to remember. In 2002, the Chrétien Liberal government endowed the Trudeau Foundation with $125 million of taxpayer funds to help its core operations. Yay, that's you and me funding this beast. Um, according to the Trudeau Foundation's last annual report, screenshots below, the federal government's Minister of Innovation, Science, and Economic Development appoints up to six Trudeau Foundation members, and the same minister appoints up to two Trudeau Foundation directors. The Trudeau government's current Minister of Innovation, Science, and in Industry is minister is Francois-Philippe Champagne. So that's interesting. Since Prime Minister Trudeau took power eight, year, eight years ago, many people affiliated with the Trudeau Foundation have received plum Trudeau government positions. My two videos where I explore this seeming link. So there you go. So people have been talking about this since at least 2017. Here is Here are people asking Justin Trudeau questions about the collapse of the Trudeau Foundation and how that relates. It's interesting to see his responses. He's not happy about all of this. He's blaming the conservatives which is very interesting. Um, Jennifer says, the Trudeau Foundation accepted money from a Chinese billionaire, returned the money, or tried to, made a statement about it, and somehow this is the conservatives' fault. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Harrison says, Justin Trudeau lashes out at the conservatives when asked by a reporter about the shock resignations of the entire Trudeau Foundation board. Just a bit of it. Here we go. In regards to the CEO and the board of directors resigning from the Trudeau Foundation, um, given that politicized, uh, given that they cited politicization, will you continue to appoint people connected to the foundation to do work for your government? Those people who are trying to get short-term political gain by increasing polarization and partisanship in this country by launching completely unfounded and ungrounded uh, attacks against uh, charities or uh, foundations um, must not succeed. Canada is a place uh, where um, we support good works of all different types um, and we need to continue to do that. Uh, I, am, I have no doubt that the Trudeau Foundation, like foundations and charities that conservative politicians have attacked in the past, uh, will continue to do the excellent work that it will do. But as I've said many times, um, it's a foundation in my father's name that I have uh, no direct or indirect connection with. Mm. Mm. Do you think he takes himself seriously? Do you think he believes what he's saying? Uh, Real Andy Lee says, Justin Trudeau begins answering a question on the Trudeau Foundation by rolling his eyes and finishes off with his trademark smug, squinty smirk. 
As you well know, the Trudeau Foundation is a foundation which I have absolutely no intersection. Remember this moment. It's very similar to the other times where Justin Trudeau has lied. I'll show you videos of that, but this is just one of the situations where Trudeau being not directly connected to the foundation maybe doesn't matter so much, right? Um, Alan says, with the foundation's most generous donor in 2016. So somebody's donating a donating million bucks, you're going to get a handshake from the prime minister at least. Maybe more, if you're Macron. I'm just kidding. Here is uh, Kelly Brown responding to Justin Trudeau saying, um, the, the video we just watched, politicians launching unfounded and ungrounded attacks on charities and foundations must not succeed. He's drumming up the idea, says Kelly Brown, of the anti-charity hate, just like he blamed the CSIS whistleblower Lower's claim on anti-Asian hate. The prime minister is not fit for office. I would definitely agree. Here is um, just a, a little remembrance of the times that the prime minister lied to Canadians because it happens so often. Here's one. Uh, the allegations in the Globe story this morning are false. That was a lie. That was a lie. And here's another one. Let me be clear. I do not have any information, nor have I been briefed, on any federal candidates receiving any money. How many times was the Prime Minister briefed about Beijing's interference in the 2019 and 2021 elections? Uh, the Prime Minister would have been briefed on foreign interference in the elections multiple times between 2019 and 2021 and 2022. Uh, we will endeavor to get you those dates. Right. So there's a whole bunch of examples of times that Justin Trudeau lies. That I'm not involved in, my, in the foundation, in the Trudeau Foundation. That might be another one of those times. Here's Jagmeet Singh. And People are like goldfish these days. It's so funny because he walks away from the question. They're asking about Chinese interference, donations to the Trudeau Foundation, so on and so forth. And Singh makes it about him and going after grocery stores. For real. He turns it around, man. He does, he does it in less than a minute. Here you go. And uh, follow up. The uh, CEO and the board of directors have resigned from the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation. Uh, they say the organization has become too politicized. Uh, who do you think is responsible for that politicization? Well, I, I want to make a, a point really clear. I think that there are serious concerns around foreign interference that need to be taken seriously. And that's something that I take seriously as well. But my goal in taking the foreign interference allegation seriously is to make things better, not to score points, not to point at this party. or. So what he did there was the question was the CEO and the board walked out of the Trudeau Foundation you know, what do you, what do you think about that? And he says, Chinese allegations or Chinese infiltration and, and um, influence needs to be taken seriously. And I'm serious about it. And we're all going to be very serious about it. He, re he took the question and then he said a different question that he wanted to answer. And now he's answering the different question, not the question he was asked. That's politics 101. That's called a pivot. Okay. And it has nothing to do with the original question. He's, he's sitting there like middle finger the whole time. He's not answering the original question, has no intention to. For that party, right now, the information that we have has implications for both liberals and conservatives. Uh, but that is not our goal to score points on either the liberals or conservatives. When it comes to foreign in interference, our concern is we want people to vote. We don't want people to feel like their vote matters. We don't want people to feel like foreign governments are influencing the nomination meetings of political parties. And so our goal is very different. What we've seen from both the liberals and the conservatives, they're more interested in scoring political points, pointing fingers at each other. And when it comes to something as serious as our democracy, the goal shouldn't be to score points. The goal should be to safeguard our democracy so people vote and they know that their vote matters because it does matter. People are getting dental care right now because they voted for New Democrats. Your votes do matter. And that's our, our, our approach rather than the other party. So in terms of who's been politicizing, I would say both liberals and conservatives I've been looking at this issue. At Sorry, it was the dentist. It was the dentist, not the grocery stores. My bad. I, I thought he talked grocery stores. It was the dentistry here. There was an, I think there's another clip of Jagmeet later where he talks grocery stores. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting how, what do you think about the resignation of the CEO and whole board of the Trudeau Foundation? And he talks about, you know, conservatives and liberals really point, each, point fingers at each other. And I give you dental money. Get real, Jagmeet Singh. Holy smoke, there's a real, real big crisis. And he talks about how foreign governments shouldn't be influencing Canada. What about the WEF? He is a young global leader from the WEF. He is not doing what Canadians want. He's doing what the WEF wants. 
he's he's a Klaus Schwab toady. Right? This is just a reminder from March 16th, how Justin Trudeau's government was compromised by the CCP. I don't think we've seen a comparable Canadian publication post anything like that. Um, maybe the Globe and Mail, but they're, they're the one breaking the news and they have the insider, right? So it's very interesting that other, other uh, media outlets aren't, aren't posting this stuff. It's very interesting. Ryan O'Connor says, by my count, Justin Trudeau has now blown up two charities in which his family members were involved by either being paid, we charity, or sitting on its board, Trudeau Foundation, charity charity. How much property did those we guys own? All they had to do was keep replacing the, the plaque. <laughs> what a grift, right? Charity. Give me a break. Black Rocks reporter says, guess who the biggest investor in the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation is? John Q. Taxpayer, $125 million. That was in 2002. Never been audited, not subject to access to information. Even MPs can't find out. What a black hole. I think we should stop funding politicians' pet charity projects. And I think we should probably do that sooner than later. I mean, is, we should, do we have a list? We should start a policy list, a policy wish list. Oh, maybe I'll do that. Um, I'll write that down. I might create a page on Canada Poly called Policy Wish List. So far on it is remove the government's ability to donate money to charities and audit charities. Current policy wish list. Stop immigration. That'd be another one. Okay, I can't get lost in this. Back to this. Let's talk about free speech. Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching. You can check out full episodes of Canada Poly every day at canadapoly.com. You can also go to canadapoly.com and pick up a ticket for a live event. The live event is taking place in Streetsville, and the location will be provided to ticket holders. Um, but you can check out a live event. Um, Dr. Patrick Phillips, uh, Sarah C., and Scarlett Martin, I'm sorry, Sarah, I don't know what you, I can't say your last name and I'm terrible at saying last names. Um, we'll be joining Greg Wycliffe and myself for a an uncensored round table. It would be lovely if you could join us. Um, tickets at CanadaPoly.com. And if you live in Toronto, Mississauga, Milton, GTA, Hamilton, Guelph, Kitchener, Cambridge, um, it's probably well worth the drive to Streetsville. <laughs> Thanks for watching everybody and have a wonderful, wonderful day.